Hello, and sorry that it's been a couple of months since my last video. Um, I've still not managed to get into my own my new house, and everything is massively up in the air, with my possessions currently scattered over at least two counties. Anyway, let's get started. A while ago, I went to a Kingfisher hide to capture images of Kingfishers fishing. I got a lot of stills, though not as many of the birds emerging from water as I'd like, but this video is composed of clips taken on my spare camera from the hide. This is a Canon 90D with 150 to 600 lens, borrowed from biology and wildlife at the University of Salford. Kingfishers are remarkable birds, perhaps Britain's most beautiful, and many people have only seen them as a flash of stunning blue over a pond or river. There are 3,800 to 6,400 pairs in the UK, and a kingfisher is only 16 centimetres long from tail to tip of bill when stretched out. As everyone says when they first see one, they're absolutely tiny. They can have three broods in a year, with each clutch being of two to ten eggs, one or two of which will usually die because the parents cannot incubate them all. Hatching takes about 20 days, with the chicks born rather undeveloped. They stay in the nest for 25 days or so after hatching. Juveniles are chased out of their parents' territory a few days after leaving the nest and may not have learned to swim or fish by this point. <clears throat> As a result, only about half of youngsters live for more than two weeks after leaving the burrow. Winter survival is also very low. Only 25% of adults in any one year will persist to the next year. Evolutionary scientists call this sort of behavioural strategy, i.e. having many offspring, each of which has low individual survival chances, are selection. This contrasts to species like elephants, orangutans and humans, who are K-selected, whom have, who have a very few offspring in their entire lifespan, but each receives a lot of parental investment, and so the individual survival chances per individual are higher. Adult kingfishers can catch fish up to 12 centimetres, 12 centimetres in length, a ridiculous three quarters of the length of the, of the bird. A least study found that each chick receives 334 grams of fish during the rearing period, i.e. 37% of the chick's body weight per day. Although some dragonfly larvae, water beetles, newts and crustacea may be eaten, the latter especially in winter, the diet is usually about 95% fish, if not more, which are taking a remarkably rapid dive from a perch one or two metres above the water, with the fish usually taken at a depth of 25 centimetres or shallower. The eye has two optical fovea, one attuned to accuracy in air and the other to accuracy underwater, where of course there are issues with refraction which is an issue for all diving birds. A, a dense layer of photoreceptors between the two foveas allows the image to swing from the first fovea to the second as the kingfisher enters the water and as it is approaching its prey. Lots of red pigment in each cone, um, photo, in each cone photoreceptor may help counteract water glare, which is potentially a major problem for a diving bird. Kingfishers are a 27 million year old family with a widespread global distribution and over 100 extant species. In terms of the European species, the male has a bill which is silver throughout, whereas, whereas the lower bill of the female is orange. So as you can see, he was far busier at the hive than she was. Kingfishers are one of those confusing species where both sexes are really beautiful. More often in nature, the male is colourful and the female less so. I'm not quite sure why kingfishers haven't evolved in the latter way. But in some species, both sexes being colourful suggests that sexual selection and mate choice is working on both sexes. In other words, that both males and females are choosy about mates. This is likely because both sexes invest a lot in rearing offspring, which is certainly not the case in many species, but is the case in kingfishers. Most kingfisher species' blue coloration is caused not by pigments, but by the structure of the feathers scattering blue light. This property, known as Tyndall scattering, sees longer wavelengths of light, i.e. the red end of the visible spectrum, transmitting quite effectively through a material, while the shorter wavelengths, i.e. the blue end of the visible light spectrum, scatter much more. Hence the bright blue coloration that is achieved. According to Greek myth, the first pair of halcyon birds, i.e. kingfishers, were created from the marriage of Alcyone and Ceyx. This couple had committed sacrilege by referring to themselves in Zeus, as Zeus and Hera, and were punished for this. However, the gods took pity, and the couple were reincarnated as kingfishers. Thus they could return to their aquatic home. 
depending on what else you read, halcyon days are either the two-week period, either side of the winter solstice, which in theory might be without storms, when winter brooding kingfishers could theoretically successfully rear their young, but halcyon days often refer to an idyllic time in the past or a peaceful time in general. Take your pick, really. But most importantly, perhaps, kingfishers are truly exquisite birds. So I really hope you've enjoyed this video and thank you.